Hello there, Patreon folks. Here is another bonus episode. Woohoo! This week, I have an extended outtake from my conversation with Chuck Tingle. During my interview, we took a little side trip into reviewing, addressing in part Carrie's SBTV review of Camp Damascus and what reviewing is for readers and for authors. And I thought you might find it a little interesting. It's a it's a really interesting conversation for me because I usually don't directly engage with authors about the reviews that we've published about their books, but Dr. Tingle is a unique individual. So I hope you enjoy this bonus episode. Thank you as always for being part of the Patreon. Your support means so very, very much. I understand that you wanted to ask me some questions. Bring it on, oh, yes. Dr. Tingle. Let's do this. Yes. I, well, I knew that we would talk deep, deep art. And I just, I, I mean, we don't have to talk about it that much. But um, in coming on, um, the review of Camp Damascus from your wonderful website, I would say, um, well, it's actually, a, it's actually not a bad review. But it is not a, it's not a good review. Um, it is pretty, pretty in the middle. But all that is to say, I was very honored to still be invited on and to kind of discuss the book. And I thought it was so neat as an example of um, that art is not, there is no right way to interpret art no. or to critique art or to feel about it. Um, and I don't know, I just... I, maybe Buckaroo's listening will think this is very strange of me to say was very moving to me that we that you that I was still asked on to be um, to just discuss this process and um, I was glad I'm glad to be here. I don't know I don't know exactly what I'm even trying to say to that it, it, other than to say that first of all if the reviewer is listening thing oh no I hurt Chuck's feelings you honestly you are not wrong. I am not right in my perception of it. Nope. Um, that's just that's just art, and I I guess I see this as a real celebration of um, that we're all going to interpret things in our own way, and that that's okay. That's the beauty. That's what makes art incredible. That's what makes it amazing. Yes. So, um, yeah. I almost I guess I want to say thank you for for having me on, despite that, but also thank you for analyzing what I created in a way that. Uh, was honest to you and not being uh, feeling odd about sharing that. Oh, not wonderful. at all. So for context for those listening, I edit every review that, go on, that goes on the site. So this review was written by Carrie. The grade was a C plus. And I edit every review that goes up. No review hits the site without going through me. That's sort of my, you know, my. I feel, see that as part of my job. I am not trying to shape the other reviewers' opinions to match mine. But I am trying to make sure of a number of things as I edit. One, that the text matches the grade. Two, yes. that the review communicates that reader's experience with the book and what they think. And a lot of times, a re what a review does is makes it clear that this book may not have been a good match for this person, but this book will be a great match for me. And I can tell you that through our affiliate links, we've sold a number of copies of this book. Because, wow, wow, yes. And also I have, my favorite email that I've received as a reviewer, and I've been doing this a really long time, is Sarah, I love everything that you hate. Keep up the good work. <laughs> That's so dang funny. So when you know what someone's like evaluative, good, bad, high, low markers are, you know where you fall in in correspondence with what someone else's opinion might be. For example, I always, I used to give a um I used to give a workshop to authors about how to interact with, deal with, process, and understand reviews because one thing that's really hard, I think about being an author, and I have published books, both self-published and traditionally published, you don't get a lot of feedback till it's done, and then you can't change it. And yes. that's really hard. And it's very easy, I think, for authors, myself included, to look at a review and say, oh, this is feedback for me. That's not feedback for you. It's done. You can't change yes. it. Do you know how many changes I would like to make to my first book? And it was published in 2009. I can't change a thing about it. Not a thing. But yes. the review is actually a, a reader's conversation with themselves and with the audience of the site, if they're publishing it, about what they thought of that book. But the thing that I think is the most important to remember is that to truly understand another reader, you have to read a lot of their reviews. It's not like 
no one person is ever the last word on a book, right? Like if I say, oh, I didn't like it. Well, that's the end of that person's career. That does not ever happen. We all want to know where everyone's opinions fall from really positive, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I love this. Let me just squee at you for 45 minutes to, wow, I had a really big, big set of problems with this. Let me tell you about my issues. We need to know that full spectrum in order to fully appreciate where someone's opinion might mesh with ours. And I, and I think that what Carrie's review does is, first of all, if all you have are positive, squeeful, gleeful reviews, that's not really going to tell an audience, is this for me? It's for that person who really liked it. And when you have someone who can be critical, that teaches you a lot about where that reader's taste lines are and what they like and what you might like. And the reason why that I think is really important, because I'm working in romance for a very, very long time, there was not criticism. There was not criticism yes. that took it seriously. There wasn't criticism that looked at it as an art form. There wasn't criticism that looked at it as a literary genre with tropes and a very long history. But there wasn't really a lot. I mean, we our, the website was founded in 2005, to give you a sense of how long wow. it's been. You're on the forefront of that. I know. I'm like, That's I'm like, good. you know how, so, like, so I'm very solidly Gen X, but you know how people talk about like geriatric millennials? I'm like a geriatric blogger. I've been on the internet <laughs> so long. I just got my little rocking chair. Like, oh, we're talking yes. about this again. All right. But yes, young, yes. Come over here, young whippersnappers. But when you, when you start at a period of time when there's very little critical examination, that criticism isn't welcomed. And we were not welcomed, very much not. What I love about your willingness to engage with a review is that you don't take it personally. That is so, so great. Like, I'm so excited to talk about a review with you because, like you said, it's done. It, it is out in the world and your buckaroos are going to interpret that as, as that's their private dialogue between their brains and the story, right? And, and I think that's the best part of it. I oh, think absolutely. that's the best. I think that um, I'd say this a lot, but the the art to me is never the painting. Um, it is um, what the artist had for bed and breakfast before they made it. It's where it's framed on the wall. It's um, what happens when you find that painting, uh, whether it's in a gallery in a dumpster or in a dumpster behind a dang diner, and you pick it up. Um, all of that is kind of to me always been the more interesting part of it. It's you know, why I have always, like, anyone from the Andes, the Andy, Andy Kaufman, the Andy Warhol, um, you know, I, I just, um, I think that that's interesting. And, and I just saw this as such a good opportunity because I don't think a lot of authors or artists would maybe want to engage in this way. No. Um, and also, um, not to talk about something, it, as I said, it's not a bad review. I don't want anyone to, it, it just kind of, it just kind of is. Um, but um, I just, I think that it's a great chance to say that um, uh, there is all these opinions and I think artists tend to think, well, you have your opinion and I have mine, but I'm the authority on this because I made it. Um, I am not the authority on my own art. I have no heckin' idea um, what it actually means when you put it into reality. Once it gets out there, it, it has nothing to do with me anymore, nope. um, and it has its own life. And the artist is not the authority. Um, it is. It is just as much the reviewer. Uh, it is just as much anyone, um, and that is equally valid. Um, I I love Campanassis. I give it an A plus. Um, she, she gives it a C plus. Um, I am not going to say that it is not a C plus. I don't know if that's not really my business. It's up to anyone else. And I think that is so, there is so much beauty in that. Mm -hmm. It is so exciting. Um, and, and so I, I just, I wish that more artists would, I think I have to learn this. One thing I need to learn, speaking of criticism, you had so, so many good points in what you just said. Um, I could not be a critic. Um, everything that I see, I mean, love, I go to any dang movie and I, I come out, I say, well, that's a dang A plus, right? That's the best movie I've ever seen. The best movie I've ever seen is always the last movie that I just saw. 
It's, it's just, I, I get so dang riled up. Um, and I think that there's a lot of, um, there's something very wonderful about that. But at the same time, um, it's kind of more powerful to do what you are saying and to give, um, to give the respect of a critique. Mm-hmm. And which is what you have done for romance. You have said this is worthy of artistic merit and critique. Um, and so that is just hitting me. And I'm thinking, wow, maybe I need to move past that. I just then love everything that sits in front of me. I can critique it, I guess, but it's just, I don't know. It's, it, it's making me question a lot of things about that. So that's another reason I'm glad we're bringing it. And also, when you're saying it, the amount of, um, Stuff we talked about at the beginning that relates to this, the way that romance is perceived, um, the way all these things are perceived is is really fascinating. There's so much thing, there's so much gray area there to dive into. Um, It's it's kind of wonderful. So yeah, I don't know. I I I don't know if there's anything else to follow on that other than to say that I I just um, think it's great. I'm honored to be here and to be able to discuss that part of it too. And and um, and good job of, uh, you know, not that you need it, like you said, you've been doing this forever, but of, um, you know, valuing critique and taking art seriously enough to critique. Thank you. The important thing, I think, is that when you were talking about the space between the work and the person who is viewing and interacting with the work, whether they're reading or listening or looking or watching, however they're experiencing that art, there's a space there that's very private. And I think for people who are looking for the next thing they want to interact with, whether they're looking for a book or they're looking for a movie recommendation, when you have critique that is both, this is the greatest thing I have ever seen, five stars, A plus, would buy again, excellent eBay user. And then you have, well, this wasn't quite for me. What What's going to happen is the person who's looking for their next thing is going to read those two and say, oh, well, now I'm curious, where am I going to land between those two? It creates a second space. So there's the yeah. privacy of the space between you and the thing that you are interacting with. And then there's the space between everyone else's opinions. Where are you going to land if you're lining them all up? Where are you going to land? And then you yeah. need to engage with it. So the idea that, first of all, you don't ever, not everybody has to be a critic. Like not everybody has to do that. The world is not Yelp, to quote Roxanne Gay. That's true. Where the world is not okay. Yelp. Um, yes. And I'm 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 astonishingly not critical of a lot of things outside of books. Like most of the times I'm like, okay, that was great. Sure. Whatever. Oh, Sounds good. Interesting. Yeah. This yeah, is the it, this is the place. It's medium specific. It's very medium specific. But I'm also really glad that you're here because as you talk about all of the misunderstandings about your work, about erotica, about horror, about romance. There's still a lot of misunderstandings about reviewing, too. And so it's it's really good to have this conversation to sort of deconstruct yes. some of what is what are the assumptions that people are operating with and what is actually happening. So thank yes. you for that. I really appreciate it. Yes. I, yeah. But then I knew this was going to be a special talk coming in. But the, thank you. It really, it, we, we, I feel like we're just taking off like a big rocket. Yep. There, there, are, there are good vibes. <laughs>